the fifth chapter of the knowledge of the holy aw told you discusses the self-existence of god self-existence means that god is the one who has always existed he's the great i am god has no beginning no origin Toja actually starts out by helping us to understand the idea of origin which means source or where things come from the term can only be applied to things created all things including you and i have an origin unlike god who is and has always been usually when i think of the term origin i immediately think of the many questions that were asked like where are you from where's your family from what's your national origin um what's your original hometown and even as a math teacher i even think about how we use the term origin as a math term the origin on a graph at that zero zero mark everything on a graph measures relative to the origin whether positive or negative from that original point Toja states that by our effort to discover the origin of things we confess our belief that everything was made by someone who was made by none someone who was someone who has no origin i am reminded of two scriptures that justify the fact that god is self-existent and the first is genesis 1 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and in the second Toja actually mentions it in the in chapter 5 john 1 1 through 3 in the beginning the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god he existed in the beginning with god God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Toja even speaks to the fact that our human mind, which was created, can't fully comprehend the fact that the creator of all things was uncreated. Toja explains that to admit there is one who lies beyond us, who exists outside of our categories, who will not be dismissed with the name, who will not appear before the bar by reason, nor submit to our curious inquiries, this requires great humility. And he brings it to our attention that unfortunately, there are going to be many people who identify as Christians, but never take a moment to explore or truly think about the thing, truly think about the being of God. This is probably why, this is perhaps why so many people find themselves or ourselves at a crossroads um, when, it, when trying to really understand our purpose for being. And when in fact, the only way to truly understand who we are as God's creation is to get to know him, to understand the great I am. And we were made in his image and to understand ourselves fully, we must get to know our creator, the one who is self-existent. And Toja states that in this utter, in, in this utter dependence of all things upon the creative, will of god lies the possibility of both holiness and sin on one hand when we think about god's self-existence we can appreciate even more that god created everything in creation and we can especially appreciate that god created us created man in his own image on the other hand as selfish humans that we can sometimes be we do not like someone else if we're being real we don't like someone else to rule over us take eve for example in the garden we want to make our own choices we, we may want God to rule over the universe, over the nations, over the people, but sometimes we rebel against God ruling over our own lives. And this is the essence of sin. Like foolish sheep, we want to go our own way. We were created to worship and to glorify God. God is our creator, our father, and our king, but we choose, whether intentionally or unintentionally, to put ourselves in the throne put ourselves on the throne of our own life we want god to rule with us but we don't want god to rule over us jesus christ the son of god lived a sinless life obeying his father perfectly and he wants us to obey him perfectly in fact we will be the most fulfilled in our life when we follow him rather than our own selfish desires and as a follower of jesus christ and a child of god we must take ourselves off the throne and give jesus the rightful place on the throne of our lives paul wrote about this in Galatians 2.20, where it says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who lives, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Putting God on the throne is easier when we remember that we need God, the creator of all things, for everything. But God doesn't need us. The Father and the Son have life in themselves, according to John 5, 26. But it, God has created man for his own pleasure. He created us for his pleasure, not because he needs us. God is the only one who doesn't need anything outside of himself to survive. So it is my prayer that 
as we get to know the self-existent God that we will fall more we will, we will become more in love with our father and come to better understand and live out our purpose for being and that we relinquish that desire to be on the throne and allow God our creator the self-existent one to be in full control because he takes pleasure in us as his creation.